This is Joelle One Rush Hour Forever. It is about a woman named Joelle. It's 4 a.m. and rush hour is on, and I'm trying to remember everything that ever happened to me. I'm heating up a glass of warm milk because that shit puts you to sleep, and it's the scene in Rush Hour where Chan teaches Tucker how to take a gun out of somebody's hands, so you know I'm wake like a motherfucker. I just remembered all my teenage years. Brother, it is one crazy trip how when you're a teenager everyone's trying to blast you in the ass. Oh no. I just remembered that I have to go back and save my own life. Not when I was a teenager, though. Back when I was four years old. Now it is midwinter, and I am four years old. Everyone in my family is sick as somebody trying to blast a teenager in the ass. My metaphor here is confused. Everyone in my family has a cold. They are literally not metaphorically sick. It is 4 a.m. in the past as well. Everything seems high up and untouchable because I'm a little girl. I walked into my mama and dad's room. I'm surprised by how hot they both are. I always thought that my dad was super mismatched for my mama, and that if one or both of them had been more discerning in choosing romantic partners, one or both of them would have gone their entire lives without enacting violence against the child. But here, look at him. I'd fuck. At this point in the midwinter of year four of my life, I have stopped speaking to everyone except for Ruger. To everyone else, I speak only in coughs. That's why everyone in my family has a cold. Outside it's raining ice and I think it is Christmas. I hear a banging which no one else hears because it is raining ice and they are sleeping because on Christmas my mama and dad drink because they're young and fun and mismatched for each other and they have a daughter who will not speak to them. The banging on the window is coming from a man with two faces. That man again has two completely distinct faces. The first face is no good and it's the face that everyone can see. And it's scarred in a permanent panic. And it's scarred in a permanent panic because it knows that everyone can see it. The second face, the one no one sees, comes out in private moments of contemplation. It comes out when the man with two faces is cooking alone for seven nights a week. And picking out movies at stores. And realizing that the movie he picks will be the only sound his apartment ever hears and for going for long walks in the ice rain, where he decides to do something he's always wanted to do to a family. When he sees me see him at my window, the man has two faces. So I go into the kitchen. I know it will be a while before he breaks in on account of he just saw a little girl in the house and he has to reconcile that, and also because I am from the future. I eat a glass of warm milk because it's already been a wild one. I go back to my mom and dad's room to wake them up, but I only cough because I am only four, and I am not speaking to them, and that is a shame, because they are both so hot, and the man with two faces will definitely want to blast my dad's ass. I wake up the dog, whose name is Ruger. A year from now, Ruger will be put down for blasting the milkman's ass super hard, because Ruger is Pitbull, and Pitbulls do what they do because they likes to do it. Ruger is a hero to me. I wake his ass up. We walk back into the living room. Rush hour is on the TV. The man with two faces has the window part ways open. So I go to the kitchen. I grab a pair of scissors for to blast his ass with. I see my warm milk in the microwave and I remember how I forgot my milk. I grab that shit and go back to the living room. Rush hour is at the part when the little girl sings Mariah Carey in the limousine and the man with two faces is standing in my living room. He takes some wild and doomy steps in my direction. Ruger whimpers on the ground. He's been cut from nuts to neck, so I guess that is different now. And now the man with two faces only has one face. A new face. A horrible new face, which is a horrible new color which no one should ever see, which was the last thing that Ruger ever saw. I look at my mama and dad's room. I cough. They don't wake up. I look at the man with one face. 
I cough. Hard and from the back of my throat. Hard and from the back of my throat and from the bottom of my stomach and with a thousand words that as an adult I've been trying to say for years and never have and never will be able to. Words of love for no one, and hate for no one, and rage for moms and dads, and understanding that moms and dads are no one. I cough. I cough with two faces. One face that belongs to a scared woman, and that is the face that everybody sees. And one face which belongs to a scared little girl who walks beside her always. The coughs are loud. They drown out rush hour. Suddenly, the guy who had two faces and then had one face now has two faces again. I put down my scissors. He hugs me. I hug him deeply, and I tell him that there is another way for people with two faces. I heat him up a glass of milk. We watch Rush Hour and suck back warm white. He says there is an undeniable chemistry between Chan and Tucker. I nod. Chan and Tucker are twin flames. He cries with his second face. That is why Rush Hour is timeless, he says. I nod. Rush Hour forever. The man with two faces leaves and takes Ruger with him. Now my parents think Ruger ran away. Ruger is the only one who things didn't work out for. But I didn't feel too bad, because I remember that no matter what, Ruger was Pitbull, and would have died blasting the milkman's ass shortly thereafter. The man with two faces ended up being the milkman. He ended up doing that thing he always wanted to do to a family, to his own family. I guess things didn't work out for them either. That's life. Winners and losers. Now I am a woman again. Rush hour has just ended. As the blooper reels roll... I realize that Chan and Tucker are the only sounds my apartment will ever hear. I also realize that it is Christmas.